Okay, so we are talking about the gaseous state. Ashley, what other states are there for matter? What other s solid and liquid? There's actually uh, a couple more. There's uh, plasma. There's uh, supercritical fluid. And for example, they use that to decaffeinate coffee. It's kind of interesting. Car supercritical fluid carbon dioxide. But we're talking about the gaseous state and being able to predict, you know, what the pressure is going to be, the volume or the temperature. Or if we change one of those parameters, what will be the new pressure, volume, and or temperature? And if you screw up, this could be a result. Okay, that's a, a tanker. And atmospheric pressure actually did that. That's, that's steel, right? It's hard to believe that we're living under so much pressure, but the pressure exists inside us, so we really don't know the difference. Okay. So what are some common units for pressure? Megan, what would be some units for pressure that you, you've heard of before? You fill the tires up to this. PSI. PSI. PSI, pounds per square inch. How about another one, Baudi? <laughs> Putting a lot of pressure on you, but that's not, right? <laughs> this, PSI is English. We're not going to do any problems at all in English. We're going to use, like, what does ATM stand for? Atmospheres. Atmospheres. There's tor. There's millimeters of mercury. There's pascals. That's PA. So Alyssa, what would KPA stand for? Huh? If PA is pascal, KPA would be Kilo Pascal, kilo Pascal. Good. Okay. So I wanted to demonstrate this to you, this idea of atmospheric pressure. We live, I, it's too bad problems don't use the English system because it's very uh, visualistic. PSI is pounds per square inch, right? So here's what atmospheric pressure is. 14.7 pounds every square inch. Almost 15 pounds in one little square inch. That's how much pressure is there. Why is it there? Because you've got about a mile of air. Now, yeah, it's thickest on the bottom. So most of the mass and weight's on the bottom, right? If you take a column that's a square inch and just go straight up all the way to the space. Yeah, it's, it's about a mile or so of, of air. And at the bottom, it's going to weigh about 15 pounds. So if you add up all the square inches on this can, it's about 350 pounds. So I don't know if I gained a heck of a lot of weight, get to be 350 pounds, and I step on this, it'd be pretty violent, right? No problem. So why doesn't it crush right now? Dylan, why doesn't this thing crush right now? Yes, inside, it's right. It's balanced. That's not the case with that thing. Okay, so that's that's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is what happened to that tanker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water in here, and I'm going to boil it. So it's, you're going to see steam coming out. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it upside down. So when when you see the steam coming out, it's full of steam. There's actually no air in there. It's all steam. So if you're inside there, you die because it's all steam, right? Plus, it's really hot. But the point is, there's no air, so it's all steam. I flip it upside down in this cold water, upside down in the cold water. What happens? Steam is going to what? Around something that's cold. It, the C word con condenses, right? It's going to condense. Right? It's going to turn from a what to a what? gas to a liquid. 
which one takes up all the pressure? Which one takes up all the volume? Is it the gas or the liquid? Which one takes up a lot more space, a lot more volume? Liquid, right? You take gas is really, sorry, the liquid is, right? All those little molecules are stuck together. It's taking up hardly any space at all. You take a droplet of water and evaporate, I mean, just turn it into a vapor, it fills up this whole room, right? It just goes everywhere. It goes to the space of the container. Right, so gases take up a lot more space. So the point is, get all this, it's full of steam, upside down, in here, it condenses to a very thin film around the outside where the can's cold. I mean, there's nothing inside but that liquid. It creates a V word, vacuum. It creates a vacuum. Now there's no pressure inside. Right, there's, no, there's nothing exerting back. So now from all sides, 15 pounds per square inch. It's going to be like a guy stepping on this thing who's about 350 pounds. So should it be violent? Should it be a violent crush or just a slow one? Since this won't fit in there, I had to fill it with this water. It should be violent. I'd say violent, too. So this is just green water. I need it for this, so that's why. All right, so let's get it boiling. By the way, I saw this on uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Did you ever watch Bill Nye the Science Guy? I like Bill Nye the Science Guy. All right. So this is the part that takes a while. I got to get the water boiling. Ah, uh, this can's too big. starting to boil, right? See a little bit of steam coming out, but let's make sure it's, it's full of steam, so let's get it boiling really good. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it's boiling pretty good right now, right? So the can is full of steam. All right, now let's see if I can be quick about this. Got to keep it boiling, otherwise the air will get back in there. All right. 15 pounds per square inch. Okay. So it works. That's the same thing that happened to that tanker. Some guy, right, they must have had something in there that was, they sealed it up and it just cooled down. And whatever liquid is in there condensed. So it must have been hot. And they sealed it up hot. So they really, I bet some guy really got in trouble on that. But anyway, how about volume? Oh, there's another demonstration. OK, so here's a barrette filled with, it's water. It's just green water so you can see it. OK, if I, this is a barrette. If I open up this bottom valve, the water's going to go down. Why does the water come out of there? Because this water is kind of what? H word. It's kind of heavy, right? <laughs> the water is heavy. But not only, remember, not only do you have the weight of this water, but you've got atmospheric pressure up here. Now there's atmospheric pressure down here pushing up on the thing. But you've got the weight of the water, so it's going to be heavier. You see that? So it's going to push the, the air out of the way. It's like the air's not even there. And we're used to that. But what if I clog up the end? And now I open up the bottom. It stays. Why does it stay? All right. It stays. It stays. So atmospheric pressure must be greater than what? It's the weight of that water. Exactly. The atmospheric pressure is greater than the weight of that water. Because if it wasn't, this stuff would drip out. OK. So this is a very useful device, if you could get the water to drip out, because then weather guides could use it to tell the pressure of the atmosphere, right? Oh, the water is going to be, they'd have to say, about 
15 meters high. Water is about 15 meters high today. So that means you have a column, and it's, this tube is going through this roof. It's about 15 meters high. And then it starts dripping. If the pressure increases, it stops, right? They have to make the pressure, make the liquid height a little bit higher. Now it's 15.2 meters. The pressure's a little bit higher. So, but they don't use water, because who wants to make a column that high? Now it'd be safer than what they do use. They use columns of what? Mercury, that silver stuff that was in that Terminator movie, right? So, so that's what's going on with, they call those manometers. But that was one of our units of pressure. There it is. Millimeters of mercury. How about volume? Lorena, what are, what's a unit of volume that you maybe heard of before? Milliliters. Lauren, volume units. Liters, bless you. Any other volume units, Kenneth, you can think of? A gallon. How about the uh, volume, volume units, Tanya? Remember what, I don't know where they would have first talked about this. Length times width times height. Wasn't that volume? What units do you end up with if you do length times width times height? Yeah, you could have like, if each side was an inch, you'd have inch, inch, but no one ever writes inch three times. They all write what? Inch. Cubic inches. So take any distance and cube it, you're going to have volume. Cubic meters, cubic centimeters, cubic decimeters, cubic miles, whatever. Right? We like the metric system, so cubic distance is volume. Okay, so you already noticed I've made some changes to this this morning, so that's just the first of several. Predicting the final temperature, pressure, or volume of a gas. Manuel, what would you say happens to gas pressure if you make the temperature of the gas colder? You lower that temperature. The pressure would increase. Do you agree? Emily, you agree? Make it colder, pressure's going to go up. In nature, what happens typically to stuff if you make it really cold? It slows down. Right? It really does. Like your hibernation, right, or whatever. You, if you really make things colder, things really just slow down. So if the gas molecules slow down, they would exert a higher or lower pressure. Lower pressure, because pressure is like, that's why I like the, the English units. This really describes well what pressure is. Pressure is force exerted over an area. So if those little molecules aren't, hit, aren't traveling so fast, they're not hitting so hard, there's going to be less pressure. And that's what you think of. So, and it's a great way to think of pressure, because liquids, they don't exert a pressure. There's no gas molecules flying around for them to exert a pressure. Then they can exert a weight. Right? But pressure doesn't really fit for, for liquids because they, they're not flying around, hitting the surfaces, of, hitting the sides of the container. So we don't have any liquid nitrogen. I just checked this morning. But I found a video on it. Let's see. That ain't it. Here it is. The Dewar flask, or thermos, contains liquid nitrogen at a temperature of 77 Kelvin. The balloon has been blown up with air.
So why the heck, so let's ask poor Alyssa, why does it get bigger again? It made sense that it got colder. I mean, sorry, it made sense that it got smaller, right? Because we said that as it gets cold, that liquid nitrogen stuff is so cold, it's like 70 degrees above absolute zero, negative 313 degrees Fahrenheit. You make that balloon that cold, yeah, the balloon shrinks, things start moving slower. But why did it get bigger again? The nitrogen went away, so the balloon got, it got warmer again, right? So if it gets warmer again, things start moving around faster again. So that's all temperature really is, is how fast things are moving around. But, okay, so here's where we get started on the homework, okay? We're going to get a, get a useful equation here to try to, so we can predict changes in volume, temperature, or pressure. If we change one, how does the other one change? Mia, we have to start, though, with the ideal gas law. And that, with the ideal gas law, it was something equals something. What was it? You remember reading this? What was it, Steph? P, anybody, P, V equals NRT. All right, now what is all this stuff? Dylan, what's P? Pressure. Pressure. How about Paul? What's V? Volume. Volume. Stephanie, we've got little n. You want help her? It's not the constant. We're not there yet. It would, save that for the next one. N is starts with an M. You have to describe the amount of the gas somewhere. It's going to be the mass of the gas, but it's moles. It's really the number of molecules, right? Because moles is a number. So N is really the number of the mo gas molecules, but it's moles. N is the number of moles of the gas. How about R, Ashley? That one is the constant. They call it the gas constant. And T, Megan? Temperature. Temperature. OK. So in order to make things work, everything needs to be in the right units. All you do, now we're not going to be working too much with, with it this class period. We're going to mess with it a lot more next class period, but it's good for you to know. I give you all these constants, right? So you look at your cheat sheet. Oh, let's not use that value for R. You look at your cheat sheet and see what R is. And then you look at R, the gas constant, and it tells you what all the units got to be. Right? Because all the units have to work out. They have to be consistent. So, Baudi, looking at that unit for R, if you're going to use PV equals NRT, what units should P, the pressure, be in? Yeah. And R has unit, where does it see the pressure units? Um, and there's only one pressure unit in there. What's the pressure unit? Someone said it. Atmospheres. Okay, so if you're going to use that equation, P had better be in atmospheres. Lorena, how about V, volume? Liters. Good deal. Lauren, how about little n? Moles. There's only one left, Kenneth. T, that had better be in units of? Kelvin. That should be a big K. It's kind of hard to write big Ks, right? This should be a big K. Because Kelvin is capital K. Okay. Let's rearrange the ideal gas law to get the expression that we're going to use today. PV, divide both sides by NRT. And we'll get the number, what, Tanya? If you divide both sides by NRT, you'll get PV over NRT equals? NRT over NRT, that would just be? Not zero, it would be one. One. Then we add some subscripts to this thing. So if you like ones for initial, or if you like initial to be little i, just use the subscript that you like. Put them on everything. Okay. And then if here's all of our initials, 
Well, if that all that equals 1, well, then we could do the same thing for our finals. P2, B2, N2, R2, T2. Right? So they have to equal each other. So you erase that middle part, and just write equals. Now, some things don't make sense to put subscripts on because, Alyssa, we're talking about changing pressure, changing volume, changing temperature. That's why there's little ones and twos here, one's initial, two final. But some things can't change on you. Does it make sense to put subscripts where? What can't change on you? The constant. So it doesn't make sense to put up subscripts there. In fact, we can just do what? Aren't they just going to cancel out? Right, so we don't even need them. Cancel them out. And then none of these problems are going to change the amount of gas. So really, we can be canceling that one out, too. So we should rewrite this. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. That's the equation that we're going to be using. OK. Manual, how many variables are in this equation in the box? How many variables are there? Six, exactly. There's six. These are going to be long problems. Because they have to give us how many of these, Mia, for this to be a problem? They have to give us five. Now, they'll probably say constant temperature or something, so then you can start canceling some stuff out. But OK. Now, Dylan's life somehow got simplified. Before, we were all worried about the units. Now, when you use this equation, the only units you have to worry about is T. Has to be in units of what? Kelvin. Okay. Because notice how that's, that's important. That's the one you've got to maintain. The rest, they'll just be the same on both sides. If you plug in P1 to be atmospheres and solve for P2, well, it'll be atmospheres. If V is in milliliters, this, make sure all the V's are in the right same units. Make sure all the P's are in the same units. And you're fine. You don't need to convert to these. You can if you want, but it's just extra work. The only one you have to worry about is temperature. OK? So and then I added this because I saw this in the homework, Paul. So let's see if you know the answer. STP, standard temperature and pressure. It consists of a pressure of blank and a temperature of blank. What would you guess? It's one something. Does anybody know? It's one atmosphere. Temperature of zero degrees Celsius. So if they ever say they're at STP, they expect you to know Pressure is 1 atm, temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. OK. But if you're going to be using our equations, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, that temperature has to be in Kelvin all the time. So to get something in, if it's in Celsius, if you have 0 degrees Celsius, Steph, how many Kelvin would that be? 273, yeah. And notice how they never say degrees Kelvin. They just say Kelvin, 273 Kelvin. They don't use the degree sign. Okay. So there's a couple of these that you should know. But I'll give you all those relations, right, if you need to convert from one set of units to the other. Okay. All righty. Let's... Let's do this first one together to make sure everyone's following what I'm trying to say. And then we'll go to the boards and see how many of these we can knock out. OK. So Ashley, we've got a cheat sheet. And I bet right now the cheat sheet is this far. A 
sample of nitrogen gas, 18 degrees Celsius, 860 millimeters of mercury, has a volume of 3.92 mils. What's the volume at 10 degrees Celsius and 0.36 atmospheres? What equation would this be, Ashley? The top one or the bottom one? Bottom one, right? What's the hint, Emily? What's the hint that tells you it's the bottom one? Yeah, there's multiples. There's multiple, right? You agree with her? There's multiple volume. There's multiple everything in there. Temperatures, all that stuff. So definitely, let's use this one. Okay, so we just gotta plug it all in. P1, B1, T1, P2. B2, T2. OK, so Megan, can you fill in some of these, identify some of these variables for me? OK. 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 Well, let's just, do, let's just identify stuff first. Um, volume 2, oh, we're looking for that. OK, we're looking for that. Let's put a question mark by it. It's a 0.36 atmosphere for pressure treatment. OK. And 10 degrees Celsius for temperature treatment. 10 degrees Celsius. OK. So, Baudi, the idea here is we're going to substitute everything in there, right? Solve for our, our V2. And on the calculator, I think it's a lot easier just to put all the numbers in and simplify it with the calculator, and then you get a number for V2. It's a lot easier to do that that way. But can we, are we ready to take all these numbers and substitute them in and plug and chug? Whoa, what happened there? We need to what? Yeah. Why it happened here? Something just died. Wow. I think it's okay now. I don't know what happened. Okay, she said convert all the, the temperatures, right? So what's 273 plus 18? 283, is that 291? OK. And this would be, whoop, our T2, that'd be 283. Do we need to do any other converting? Lorena, do we need to do any other converting? The milliliters to liters, did they care? They didn't care. So since we're not using this equation, we don't care what the volume units are. Just be consistent. So since they're in milliliters, I say leave them as milliliters. It's less work. We could. There was nothing wrong with it and get our answer in liters, but I say just leave it alone. So if we leave that alone, Lauren, does that mean we're ready to plug and chug? Is there something else? Yes. There's been, I've changed a bunch of things, sorry. You get what you pay for. <laughs> yeah, so just, why, did it change a lot? It's like 760 millimeters, zero degrees Celsius. Yeah, I, I changed it so there's actually something to do here. Otherwise, it was too easy. I changed a bunch of them, sorry. OK, so are we good to plug and chug? Pressure. Yeah, the darn pressure. OK, do you want to, let's let Lauren pick. Lauren, do you want to mess with atmospheres or millimeters of mercury? You've got to pick one or the other, right? She wants to mess with atmospheres. So let's leave this one alone. Let's convert that one into atmospheres. OK, it's in here. How do we convert? Tanya, that thing to atmospheres. Uh, 
one ATM equals this. Yeah, so where would you put the 760? On the top or the bottom? At the top. Which is at the top. Does everybody agree? Oh, no, it's at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, once you start writing it, as long as you write the units, right? If you write the units, it's going to stare you in the face. It's in the wrong place. So that's where it kills you, if you're, especially on exams and quizzes, just to write this, because it's not obvious at all. Write the units, and it tells you. So we've got to divide 860 by 760. I get about 1.13 atmospheres. OK. So you know, now you have them all, except for V2. Plug them all in. Solve for V2, and your answer better come It will. It will come out in milliliters. See if you can get it to work. And what I, I really strongly suggest, it, just get used to it. Don't, the, your work is already shown. You're not going to get any more points by showing more steps. Look at this expression, know how to do it on your calculator, and just plug in and get your answer. If you want to get your V2, what would you do first? Dylan, what would you do if well, you want to do this in one step on your calculator? Good, multiply 1.13 times 3.92. Divide it by 291, then you would do uh, this 283 goes where? It's going to go up to the top, right? And the 0.36 is going to go down to the bottom, right? So on, and just if, get used to doing, seeing that visually, because then you would see that 1.13 times 3.92. Divide by 291. Good, this guy's done. And then times 283, because he goes to the top, divide by 0.36, because he goes to the bottom. And remember, you're multiplying, dividing. The order doesn't even matter what order you do this in. In one step, you can get your answer. And I'm telling you, homework's going to be faster, less frustrating. You can get the right answer much more often. Can, and you can hit equals any point along the way. Okay, did you get like around 12? Yeah. Excellent. 12 mils. All righty. Fun time at the boards now. Woohoo! It's a Friday. Spread out as much as you can. Hopefully this one didn't change too much. So helium gas, 22 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, occupies a vessel whose volume is 2.54 liters. What volume would it occupy if it were cooled to liquid nitrogen temperature? Negative 197 degrees Celsius. So what equation are you going to use there, Dylan? Is 
if you see multiple of anything, it's got to be that the one with ones and twos in it. Right? Do you see multiple of anything? Yeah. Yeah, so it's got to be the one with ones and twos in it. If anybody's not sure, just ask so I can help you out here. Yep. Yeah, that's a good question. What's, that, what's going on with the pressure? It's got to be the same, right? It has to. You have to assume the pressure's not changing. So you can cancel those P's out. Or just put one atmosphere in for both of them. Because I guess they're doing it at the lab bench or something, right? So the, the pressure's not changing. Yes, yeah, so to get to Calvin, that equation's not up here. Temperature in Kelvin, you always add 273 to the Celsius to get it into Kelvin. So that's one that the book's going to expect you to know that one. Six five liters. The guy, folks in the back are getting point six five liters. So if you get point six five liters along with the folks around you, go on to the next one. Not, let me help you out. Go on to the next problem if, if you get 0.65 liters. Ah, it's close enough, it's just rounding. What is that, Lauren? What's negative 197? No, no. 76? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, we'll see, just see if you can figure it out, and I'll be right there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. So Mia, how are you going to do EX3? <laughs> This is, it's a hard one. This one, you almost have to get out of the reading in order to answer a question like this. And what they want you to do is write the reaction. And the answer's in the reaction. So liquid methanol can be produced reacting carbon dioxide gas with hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst. Water vapor is the other product. So then they have this question. But let's write the reaction that's described here. What are my reactants? What are my products? See if you can identify them, write them in there. Identify what you think the reactants and the products are, put them in there, and then see if you can balance it. And the answers really are the stoichiometric coefficients, but see if you can write it. See if you can write that reaction and balance it. Now you need your subscripts. Get your subscripts in there. So did you figure out how to get this guy balanced? How did you do it so I don't have to do it? <laughs> A three to the hydrogen? Does that work? Excellent. Thank you very much, Dylan. OK. So the answer are the, let's look at the question now. How many volumes of hydrogen are required for each volume of carbon dioxide? Which gas is at the same temperature and pressure? What they want you to, the idea behind this is if you have PV equals NRT, and if all the gases have the same pressure, volume, and right, they're going to have the same number of N. All gases will have the same number of moles if you have the same pressure, volume, and temperature. So all you pretty much do is look at these coefficients. Like you could say, you could almost read this as we're supposed to read it as three moles of hydrogen reacts with a mole of carbon dioxide and produce a mole of, well mole of methanol and a, a mole of water. That's how you're supposed to read it. But in terms of gases, if everything's at the same pressure, volume, and temperature, you can say three volumes of hydrogen reacts with one volume of CO2. right? And I think water is supposed to be a, a gas. That's supposed yeah. to be a G. Yeah. So you could say three volumes of hydrogen react with one volume of CO2 to produce one volume of H2O. So the answer would be what? How many volumes of hydrogen are required for each volume of carbon dioxide? Three. That's all it is. The important part is you see the little G subscript. You got to see the G subscript, and then you just compare the coefficients. That's that type of problem. You'll have that in the homework coming up, too. They said it's a vapor, so H2O, we had to put G on it. Yeah, yeah. they said that liquid methanol is produced. So that's why I had to put a little L on it. Okay. So there's one, one more question. In fact, there's a whole bunch of, a lot more questions. <laughs> Just added them. <laughs> All right, so let's let's take one that let's just do ex4, and then you can go at, you can go to the seats and do it since you don't right. Do let's do ex4 at the seats, and then we can call it a day. At the desk, what would you call this? Sitting down. Sitting down. <laughs> let's try this one sitting down, and then you can start your weekend. You don't have any other classes, I guess. Pantothenic acid is a B vitamin. 
Using the Dumas method, you find that a sample weighing 71.6 milligrams gives 3.84 mils of nitrogen gas at 23 degrees Celsius and 785 millimeters of mercury. What is the volume of nitrogen at STP? We have two choices to get our volume. There's one, here's the other one. Which one do you, do you think it's going to be? The second one, why? There's multiples. Exactly. And you know what? A lot of the stuff is just garbage. You don't care about any of this stuff. That's all you need. You need to identify your P1, V1, and T1, and your P2, V2, and T2, and solve it. They gave you a lot of extra information there to make it confusing. Now, you've got to remember what STP is. One atmosphere, zero degrees Celsius. So you can call that V2 and T2 if you want. Or sorry, that's not V2. That's supposed to be a P, right? P2 is one atmosphere. And you want to know V2. We have a few minutes, see if we can get, see if somebody can get an answer to this. Get an answer, Lauren? Yeah, so you're going to have to convert either atmospheres. You know, the, the easy one would be just to convert the atmospheres to millimeters of mercury, because one atmosphere is how many millimeters of mercury? 760, that'd be the easy way to go. Then just keep your pressure in millimeters of mercury. That'd be the easy route, easier route. Did you get an answer, Kenneth? Oh, yeah. What'd you get? 3.65 milliliters. Anybody else get that? Stephanie got it. 3.65 milliliters. Okay. So have a good weekend.